Torah TV. The world is thinking. February 25, 1955. The overhead light in the room I shared, I shared with my older sister snapped on. My mother, a ghostly figure, hovered over our beds. Children, she whispered. I lifted my head up for an instant before dropping back on my pillow. <clears throat> you have to get up. They need to search your room. Her voice, urgent and weary, was about to break. Now. I could just about see who they were, shadowy figures, five or six of them, forming a dark mass in the corner. Behind them, with their arms folded, stood Madame, the vile French nanny <laughs> that I spoke about earlier. Madame and Mrs. Priegel. Mrs. Priegel was the concierge in our apartment who was also informing. Uh, Madame and Mrs. Priegel, witnesses required by law for such operations. Get into our bed, my mother said. As we slowly awoke, one of the searchers moved in. Like a hunter stalking big game, he sank his knife into our beat-up, stuffed rocking horse. Straw spilled out of my oldest possession as my sister and I ran to the room next door and dove into our parents' bed. We were too dazed to ask where Papa was. Or did we know somehow? Elvitek, Hungarian, for they took him away was a word I often heard as a child. I did not understand where people were taken to, just that they were gone and not much more was said. So now my father had been Elvitek, taken away. Now we flash forward four months because the secret police in its humanity gave my mother four months to figure out what to do with her daughters, Kati age six, uh, Julia age eight. So now. It is uh, four months later. In the late afternoon of June 23rd, our doorbell rang. Entirely absorbed in my long-awaited play date with Juji Kalmar, the older girl next door, I waited for my mother to answer the door. Juji and I were cutting up an old dress of my mother's, which we planned to turn into doll clothes. It was not by chance that Juji had chosen that afternoon to visit me. We only learned much later that she had been enlisted to play a small part in my mother's arrest keeping me occupied during its smooth execution. At the time, I was excited to have this serious older girl's company and reluctant to get up and answer the door. After the second ring, I did. Three men in workers' overalls peered down at me. We came about the meter, one of them lied. Your mother had rung. Please get her. I had a feeling they weren't who they said they were. Even to a child's eyes, these men did not belong in those two clean overalls. But I was eager to return to Juji. Now, I wonder, what did it feel like for those secret policemen to be masquerading for a little girl? Did they feel anything at all? Were they the fathers of little girls? Mama, I called out. But by the time she emerged from behind her closed door, I had already returned to my room and to Juji. When, sometime later, the apartment seemed strangely quiet, I peered out. Mama, I called. Mama, no answer. The apartment was empty. I had never before been alone in a place that just months before housed three generations, my grandparents, my parents, and us children. I had never before noticed how the floorboards in the dark foyer creaked. As I rushed from room to empty room, I was aware of my heart pumping for the first time in my life. My mother was gone. How could she have left without calling out my name, without kissing me? Crying out and calling Mama, I ran down the three flights of stairs that led to the street. My sister was sitting on the curb, crying, her bicycle lying next to her. She had seen the men in overalls holding our mother above the elbows shove her into the back of a Mercedes. But the car had pulled away before my sister could get off her bike. So we sat there, the two of us, and waited. 